Utility AI, or Utility Systems, is a popular decision-making algorithm used in games where your NPC has a bunch of actions to choose from. I will show you a working example and how I implemented it, but first let me explain how it works. The idea is that actions are more or less useful depending on the context and the world state. If you think about an eating action, it's definitely important if your character is hungry, but not so much if they are not. While behavior trees and goal-oriented action planning deal on how to achieve a behavior, a utility system focuses on the decision-making step. It provides a way to compare different actions by giving them a score. For that, actions need to have one or more considerations, which basically translate the world state to a number. For example, the eating action needs to consider hunger, while the sleeping action needs to consider the NPC's energy. You first translate this raw value to the 0 to 1 scale. This is actually optional, but it makes it easier to compare against other scores. After you get this number, you need to define a formula or curve to explain how that consideration impacts your action's score. For hunger, 0 is not important at all, while 1 is very important. But maybe the importance is not linear. For example, you can say that before 50%, hunger should not be considered. And then the importance increased gradually, but when reaching 75%, it's already at maximum utility. For the sleeping action, it will be the other way around. When energy is at 100%, that's when we don't care about it. But when it's getting closer to zero, then it becomes quite important. Using their normalized number as a coordinate, you can pick the actual utility score for the consideration from the curve, which then becomes the score for the action. However, in many cases you have more than one consideration in an action, and you need a way to group them. These are called aggregations. For instance, eating is an important action, but it's pointless if you don't have food available. As this is a boolean, I will convert false to zero and true to one, and set a simple curve. Now we have two scores and we need to group them. Usually, people aggregate scores by multiplying their values. But some average, max and min are also useful operations. In this example, multiplication works well because a zero in has food would nullify the other consideration. With all scores calculated, now you just need to pick the best one for the job. This calculation will happen continuously and the utility system should notify every time the highest utility action changes. In some cases, instead of picking the top action, you might want to pick randomly one of the top scored ones. This adds more unpredictability to your AI. Another common strategy is to group actions in buckets of similar actions so you can guarantee the one being chosen is relevant. I hope it's clear so far, but if it's not, maybe the code will help you clarify it. I implemented this example in Goddard. There is a version with one and multiple NPCs. I'll push my code to GitHub so you can take a better look. The asset pack used is Fantasy by Analog Studios. You can find it on itch.io. In this example, the NPC has three meters, hunger, energy, and stress. Hunger increases over time, and the NPC needs to eat to lower it. The stress also increases over time, but only when the NPC is far from the fire pit. Energy works slightly differently as it decreases over time, and the only way to recover it is by sleeping. There's a total of 7 actions in this NPC. I'll show you the considerations and curves for them in a second, but first let me show you how I implemented the basic nodes. For this example, I used Godot's uh, node system. So it always starts with the utility AI agent node. And this is the one that's gonna execute the calculations and notify if the highest score changed. So it's, it checks for each action that's supposed to be the, its children and it calculates its score. It also keeps track of all scores, so you can ask for them if you need to. And then in here, if the top action changed, then it emits the top score action change signal. And as I mentioned, the focus of this AI is the decision making. Uh, you are the one to decide what's gonna be executed when this action changed. The next one is the action. The action itself uh, also doesn't do much. So the calculate score method just gets the score from the consideration. And you can notice that I'm hard coding picking the first child here because it's supposed to always be just one child. And the reason for that is that if you have more than one consideration like this, you are supposed to use an aggregation. Uh, if you see the aggregation here is mult that for multiplication and uh, you can change what consideration you want. And the consideration here is where the half lifting happens. This is where you define your curve and you have the method calculate score that basically gets uh, the raw score and applies the curve. So this apply curve here, it could be a formula. You could manually define like a mathematical formula to get the result. And there is a chance that this would be more performatic than just using the built-in curve. But in my opinion, this is more human readable and it's easier for us to change the curve. Like if I get to the example here, I'll get this consideration, I'll add a curve. 
and that's how I set up the curve and that's how I edit. I don't need much math knowledge to be able to create a curve that makes sense to my application. Going back to the script, uh, the score method here, you see that in this script, the score method, it's empty. And the idea is that you need to extend this class and implement your own score method. This is the one, as I mentioned, that converts the raw value to the zero to one scale to be used in the curve. So I have one example here that's the consideration from node. So this one extends from utility data consideration and the score is a custom score uh, calculation. It basically gets the value from the node and then it kind of normalized. So let me show you how this works. I'll have to go to my real NPC for that. So I'll get, um, I don't know which one, maybe stress is the one. You see that I have the node here. So I click here, um, I select which node has the property I want to use. After you select the node, you need to say from which property the value is coming from. Um, and then there is the maximum value for that property. That's basically what you expect to be the 1.0 value. And that's what's going to be used for normalization. Again, this step is optional. If you don't set this value, if you leave it as one, what's going to happen is that um, you have to adjust this curve here to consider uh, the, the full value instead of being from zero to one. Coming back to the example here, what's going on here is that this property can either be a method or a regular property. If it's a method, I'm going to call it and it's expected to return a value. If it's not, I get the other one. And uh, if the value is a Boolean, I just uh, convert to a number, otherwise it just return this number and then the max value is applied afterwards. So as I said, if the, the scale of this score is from 0 to 100 and I set 100 here, uh, what's going to happen is that if 50 comes here, it will convert it to 0 0.5 and that's what we want. So it makes it easy for us to define uh, curves from that because we know that the scale will always be from 0 to 1 and that's why I think normalization kind of makes things simpler. I have another example here that's using a score that's not even related to the node, uh, to the um, NPC node. This one here checks if there are nodes in a group. So I use the example of eating. If there isn't food available, uh, I want to nullify the task and that's how I do it. All my food here would be in the target group food. And uh, if I find something, I return one. If I don't find it, it's zero. And yeah, those are examples of custom considerations. And those are the basic nodes. So now the way this is used if I open my NPC script here, um, you see I have like things like this is regular NPC stuff, like we don't care about it. And then I have this thing here. This is, so if you see my utility AI agents here and I connect it to that signal and this is the handler for that signal. And this is gonna pick, or if the action is this, that, or that, this is what's gonna do. And um, yeah, let me show you this in action then. So this is the AI built for this NPC. So let me start with the simplest action that's idle. Um, idle actually, the only consideration it has, it's nothing. And I'm not really sure if this is how people do stuff, but what nothing means is this is actually just the raw consideration class. It, it doesn't really, it doesn't have the score uh, implemented. And the thing I did is just, I set a curve here that it's always the same value. If you see here, it's always this point that's kind of a 0 0.22. And this is the default score for the idle. It will always be like that. So what this means is that this defines 0 0.22 being the idle score, like anything below it, it's not important enough to be acted on. Um, the other one is eating, and eating does use two different uh, aggregations. What's happening here, let me go to the INR one. So the INR aggregation is just a regular mode application, and I have the hunger and food in pocket. So basically, this one considers the hunger, and it's similar to what I was talking about, where from 0 to 0 0.5 is not that important, but then after that, it constantly goes up up to one but this is only considered if food in pocket is available i have this property on the npc that's food in pocket it's boolean if it's important if it's in the pocket it's zero if it's not it's one and that's what i used for the eating um, action so the reason i have the second aggregation it's because sometimes you might get in a deadlock let's say if you have a defined food and a look for shelter action if it happens that they both have similar scores you might get in that situation where you pick a score in a tick and another score in another tick. And this keeps happening, you get this deadlock until the weights change. And to prevent that, you can consider if the action is running already as a method to give it a better score. And what I did here, and I'm not really sure how cool is that, I just have this utility aggregation that sums the value from already eating to my regular considerations. What's gonna end up happening here is that the total score for this action will be 
not it will be above one it will be like two and i don't know how cool it is to do something like that but this was the simplest way um, i could achieve this behavior and i think this makes sense for this action here because i don't want it to be stopped at any cost i could have just disabled the agent while this action is happening but i decided to keep the agent running and by doing this i'll just make sure that no other action will be higher than this one and i do have another example here i think it's finding for food where already looking for food is part of the regular aggregation and this one is still a multiplication and this gets trickier because if i do it like this where i want to make sure that it's already looking for food and, and then it becomes a higher score. Uh, in order to not affect the other scores, I need to start at one. And if you see the, the when it's zero, when it's not looking, it's in one. So um, the other scores are not impacted by this one. And uh, it gets 1.3. And the reason it's 1.3, it's it still goes over one a little bit, but by doing this and by doing this in other tasks that also have the same um, checks, uh, what's going to happen is that this allows this task to be interrupted. So I guess if you want this task to still have a chance to be interrupted, you need to do it as part of your regular considerations. But then if you want a task that uh, it, it shouldn't at any cost be interrupted, um, you can just add uh, like a number that's going to make sure that you will always be the right score. Also, as I mentioned, it's up to you what to do with this agent. So you can, when you get like the eat task, you can, as part of the eat callback, just say, stop the agent i don't want to hear about new actions for this period of time and that's totally valid and then um well sleep is considering energy and if it's safe if it's safe it means if it's close to the fire pit uh, and then i also have the other aggregation with is already sleeping as one consideration and then um, relax and relax is basically if your stress level is too high and uh, you are in a safe place um, they just stay there it's kind of an idle but in this idle state, you're making sure that the stress level is lowering. Um, and then uh, find food. Again, it checks if there is food in pocket. This is a different curve from the other one because uh, if there isn't, then it's when it's important. Otherwise, it's not important. And then again, if the food is available, this is using the custom, um, the custom script I talked about that has nodeing group. And this one checks if there is any node with food. Uh, and if there isn't, it just becomes a zero. And then the hunger obviously is considered and it's very similar um, curve as the other one. I could actually have used the same curve. And then look for shelter is basically if the stress level gets too high, if it's not in a safe place, it becomes one, otherwise zero. And again, we can see if it's already looking and then I have go to sleep. And, I get, and this one is basically if you are far from the fire pit, but and your energy gets too low like this, you can see that there is this huge drop in here. What this curve is saying is that in here, this is 10, 10%. So if it's lower than 10%, if your energy is lower than 10%, that's where this thing becomes super important because you don't want to risk sleeping anywhere. And uh, after 10%, it's still important, but the, the importance, the utility starts getting lower until on the 40% is when it's not that high at all and then from here it just gets lower as it gets closer to uh, the total 100 percent and yeah and then basically this one is checking if it's safe or not if it's already looking for shelter there is no need to make it go and that's it that's how i find uh, the decision making is described here and the benefit is that it's easy to see what's being considered and also it's easy to tweak because even though we are talking about curves in mathematical stuff uh, it's way simpler to come here and say, hey, this is not working quite well, so I want to get here and I want to do a curve that's a little bit like this or like that. And really, it becomes more a decision-making designing than really a decision-making programming in that sense. Um, now, let's see this in action. All right, I pre-recorded this so I can stop and speed up if needed. So in this example, the three bars, the top one is basically, uh, I think, uh, the stress level, this one is hunger, and this one is the energy. As I mentioned, idle is a constant, so it will be idling until one of the other ones become the higher thing. And uh, as hunger is growing, it's likely that hunger will be uh, the first one to reach that. Yeah, so once the hunger gets there, it finds food and then now it's eating. And then these, you see how these went over one, and this is the thing I show you where I'm summing one to uh, the eat thing. Once it's fed, now idle became, again, became the most important one. Now again, it's hungry again. But here's what's gonna happen now. If you look into the stress level, relax to zero and look for shelter is going up because of the stress level. 
So now you see that the stress level jumped to four and it's not that high, but still higher than the idle. Uh, what happened here now is that the energy dropped below, I think, 50%. And even though like the other ones are still there, the sleep became the most important one. And now it's going to sleep and it will remain above one until it reaches 100% because that's what uh, we added there. Yeah, but then hunger is getting pretty high. And when it wakes up, it goes find food and eat again. And it's going to keep doing this until uh, it runs out of food, I guess. So let me speed this up. Uh, unfortunately, my panel is outside the camera, but what's happening here, if you see the energy level is pretty low. And what's gonna happen now is that it's gonna go back to the fire pit, but the reason it's going back, it's not because of the stress level, but because of the energy level to go to sleep. And, uh, and then when it reaches there, it just sleeps. And yeah, that's it. So speed up a little bit more. I think the only last thing to, to give you as an example is that once it runs out of food, that, that this was the last one, uh, it gets back. You see that even though hunger is getting pretty high, the fine food, it's not triggered and because there is no food available and that's it. I guess in your game, if hunger reaches 100%, maybe it will cause some damage and eventually the NPC will die, but I did implement this kind of stuff here. So it's just gonna stay there without doing uh, anything major. Just, I guess, sleeping and idling. And that's it. I also have an example with uh, multiple NPCs. So you can see that they are really uh, autonomous agents, like they are not impacting each other. Each one is using their own state for this decision making. Uh, they do work quite similarly. And the reason for that is just because they have just one action for uh, eating and just one, one action for recovering energy. I guess if, if I could give them more options, like you can also sit to recover energy or you can um, eat different kind of food, then these would look a little bit more uh, random and not as robotic. But that's an improvement. I guess this one already tells you a lot about how those things work. The code is on my GitHub. You can go there and play with it. Also, I have videos about uh, behavior trees and goal-oriented action planning. I cringe a little bit when I watch those videos, but people seem to like it. So maybe they're still useful. And they also come with code examples because I want to prove you that this works. I don't want to bullshit you. Uh, not necessarily they are the best implementation of these ones. They are mostly experiments, but I guess they do really give you a north on uh, or an idea on how to implement this kind of stuff. But just one thing to consider, people always talk about performance for these things. Like in here, if you don't want to use curves, you can implement the math functions yourself. But here's the thing, and this is something to learn, is that early optimization is like the worst of the evils. I think they say something like that. And to give you an example, the way I implement behavior trees is basically how I did in my video. I use the node system and I have in my game Farstar, that's by the way, it's on Steam. So uh, I wasn't gonna do a plug, but yeah, you can go there and buy the game. Or if you have the game already, please leave a review that will help me out. But going back, the Farstar, there are all the AIs or most of the AIs in that game use behavior trees implemented exactly like my example. And I have behavior trees with more than hundred nodes and situations where you have a bunch of enemies and all of them are using behavior trees. And I didn't see any real uh, performance issues with that. I did have performance issues with particles and all this stuff, but honestly, when it comes to the behavior tree and the node system, that works quite well. So I think it's something to keep in mind. Yes, you can do a more performant way and maybe you should if this is what you're focusing on, but sometimes like a simpler, more readable approach will solve your problems and you don't need to be too concerned with other things solve the problems when they arise. Don't try to come up with a solution for a problem you don't have. And that's it. If you want to suggest a topic that you think would be nice for me to look into, uh, now that I finished Farsar, I'm kind of a, not free, I still have my, my plans and my goals, but I do have a little bit more uh, time for experimentation. So leave in the comments uh, what kind of stuff you think would be nice for me to experiment with and I can make a video like this one. Also subscribe to the channel. This is the best indicator to show that people enjoy these kind of videos and to um, make me do more of it. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much. I hope you have a great day, a great week, a great year and see you later. Bye bye.